love and mystery on Front Page Detective. Starring Mr. Edmund Lowe as the famed newspaper columnist and amateur detective David Chase. And now for another thrilling adventure as we accompany David Chase and watch him match wits with those who would take the law into their own hands. As usual, it all began with me in the role of innocent bystander. I was still in Hollywood on a vacation. And like thousands of other tourists, I was doing my bit toward improving the breed of California horse flesh. Now, it isn't generally known among the racing fraternity, but when it comes to horses, I'm strictly a form player. Except that the ones I pick are usually the playboy type. Never in any hurry to get home. <laughs> well, it's been happening that way for years. But I'm not complaining about it. After all, it's one way of meeting some of our most important people. And in the newspaper business, that's bread and butter. In fact, it's a three-layer cake with frosting when you're a guest in the private box of a prominent civic leader and political big shot like Riley Jarbo. Don't tell me you weren't on Paradox, Chase. And my dough is a rank outsider. <laughs> Frank, outsiders like this, you should have all the time, Chase, old boy. Yeah, it beats me. A few months ago, that dog was 51 shot. Look at him now. Yeah, he's knocking on the door, but loud. If he connects in the Hollywood Gold Cup, a lot of smart money is going to change hands. Yeah, a lot of bookies are going to take it on the chin. <laughs> or take bankruptcy. What's the matter with you, anyway? Can't you do one little thing right? That's $500 I told you to put on Paradox. Oh, Mr. Berry. $500. You lost me over seven grand. But I didn't know he gave me the You wrong didn't ticket. know. This is the last time you won't know for me. You're fired. Oh, Mr. Berry, please. Never mind this, please. And that $500 back pay I owe you, you can forget about it. Isn't that Gloria Barlow over there, that brunette? Yeah, you met her at my barbecue party. Nice kid. Hey, I'll say she is. Very nice. I had the pleasure of her company several times since your barbecue. She, she's charming. I didn't realize she was married. Well, she isn't. What gave you that idea? That guy over there yelling at her like a husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's going too far. Oh, no, huh? Chase, I'd think twice before I mixed with him. What is he, a wrestler? No, but he swings a lot of weight. That's George Berry. He's the owner of the horse you should have bet on just now. Paranaut? Yeah. And his silks match his temper, bonfire red. And not to mention the dangerous company he keeps, like uh, Benny Cuba there. They say that uh, Cuba's the big wheel in the bookie syndicate. Only it'd be kind of hard to prove it. Who's the blonde girl then? Oh, that's Cuba's girlfriend, Trixie Tremaine. Funny, Gloria Barlow doesn't seem like the kind of girl who'd run around with that sort of mom. <laughs> with her, it's a living. She's Barry's personal secretary. Oh, yeah, that's right. She told me. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Chase, don't be a fool. Now, stop your sniveling. Now, go and get out of here. I never want to see you again. Either you're utterly incompetent or one of the smartest crooks I ever... You're out of your weight class, aren't you, Barry? Who the devil are you? Mr. Chase. Chase, eh? Okay, Chase, go chase yourself before I call an usher. Call the militia if you like. But keep your hands off Miss Barlow. What Mr. Barry is suggesting nice-like is take a powder. Drop it in the suggestion box at the end of the hall. Oh, a comedian. Now, look, Mr. clown, Mr. I... Chase, please. I don't want any more trouble. If this character gives you any trouble, I'll break him in two. And that goes double for you. Come on, Benny, let's get down to the stable. We'll meet you at the bar, Trixie. Come on, Ben. And if you still want to play hero when I get back, I'll buy you a tin medal and shove it down your throat. Oh, that's a nice little group. Ah, oh, now take it easy, take it easy. What'd you try to do, Gloria? Tell him the truth about himself? Fired me. Lucky girl. But why the slap in the face, dear? Well, he was sore because he gave me $500 to bet on Paradox. And I got tickets on the wrong horse. Oh, now everybody makes mistakes. Don't let that worry you. So he lost $500. He can afford it, can't he? Yes, but, but I can't. What do you mean, dear? Well, he threw the tickets in my face and told me I could keep it for the back salary he owes me. Mr. Chase, I can't afford to lose $500. I, I'm practically insolvent. Now, with well, your assets. Come on, honey, let's go. Where? I'm going to drag him out from under his rock and make him pay you what he owes you. Or put him in dry dock for repairs. Uh, Mr. Chase, please, let me go on ahead. Maybe I can persuade him to... To the human? It's asking a lot of a heel. Well, I'll go on down to the stake. How are you going to get in? My badge. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, honey, you run along. I'll be there in a few minutes. Take it easy.
What's the matter, Gloria? Where did you get that gun? I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't. Okay, quiet now, quiet, quiet. Now, come on, keep calm now. Keep calm, Gloria. Now, tell me, tell me. Easy now. What happened? I don't know. It was so dark in here after the sun outside. Where'd that gun come from? I don't know. It was in his hand. I just saw it and picked it up. Picked it up? Gloria, you don't do things like that. Not when there's been a murder. Murder! I thought it was suicide. No. No, it couldn't be. There were no powder marks around the wound. Yeah, you can engrave the name of George Barry on a marble headstone. Another one for paradox. Too bad about the horse. Now, look, Gloria, dear, you've got to pull yourself together. Now, come on, now. Now, look at me. Now, tell me, don't lie to me, will you? You could have used that gun, you know. You were in here just long enough. You had a logical motive to kill Barry after what he did to you. And then, in the dark, you might have missed him the first time and then hit the horse. Now, tell me, did you? No. No, I didn't. I swear oh, I didn't. Shh, quiet now, dear. Do you know who did? I didn't see anybody. Oh, Mr. Chase, you've got to believe me. All right. All right, I do. But do you realize that you left your fingerprints in that gun? My fingerprints? I'll wipe them off. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You'll be wiping off the fingerprints of the killer, too. Now, leave it alone. Now, look, you've got to take your chances that the police will be able to separate your fingerprints from the others. If you did, did smudge them. Oh, boy. Oh, Mr. Chase, what am I going to do? Get out of here fast before we have company. Wait, too. Any place, any place, as long as you keep undercover. Now, look, Gloria, don't worry, will you? I'll do my level best to get you out of this. Keep your chin up now, come on. Operator. Will you have the usher go down to section 7, box 102, and tell Mr. Jarbo, Mr. Riley Jarbo, that he's wanted at the Barry stable right away? Yes, Surgeon. Thank you. Chase, I'm sorry you didn't take my tip. I'm afraid you got yourself in a mess. I still don't understand why in the world you let that Barlow girl get away. Well, I told you before, I have a hunch that she's innocent. Maybe. So what's done is done. Where'd she go? I meant it when I said I don't know. Well, you should have notified the police. Well, I want to talk to you first. After all, I'm a stranger in these parts. Well, I hope the homicide boys will buy it. Let's get them down here and find out. All right. Uh, hello, operator. This is uh, Riley Jarbo. I want the chief of track police down here at the Berry Stables right away. Yeah, that's right, the Berry Stables. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, Chase, you've really got yourself in a mess. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time. Hello, Mr. Chase. Look, don't ever do that, will you? Took ten years off my life and I can't afford it. Gloria, how'd you get in here? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. I, I was afraid to go home for fear the police might be there. Yeah, you might be right at that. Except that I'm in this as deep as you are. The police might come calling on me any minute now. Then I'd better go. Where? Go where? I don't know. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Room clerk, please. Did anyone you know see you come up here? No, I don't think so. Good. Hello, room clerk. This is David Chase, room 307. I'd like to engage a room for my private secretary. Thanks.
You want we should call a militia now, Mac? Grab that phone, Willie. Don't need this. Now then, Chase, give us the answer to one simple question. Nobody will get hurt. Where's that Barlow dame hiding out? Sorry, but I'm a stranger in town. Let me get my hands out of boy. My knock a bridge up for his face. Next night, stupid. Go in the bedroom and bring a pillowcase. Pillowcase? You heard me. Don't ask questions. Don't tell me we're going to have a slumber party. Yeah, sucker. You're about to have a session with the Sandman. Okay, boys, now what? There's an urn in the hall. Go bring it. An urn? That thing where you put out the cigarette, go get it. Oh, annoying. Chase, I'm going to give you one more chance. Where's that Barlow dame hiding out? Sorry, don't speak English. Okay, we're going to teach you the language. Really? Yeah. Put some sand in that pillowcase. Oh, I get it. You mean you're going to get it, but good. That's good, Willie. Now tie a knot in it. No, you can't Freeze. do that. Okay, Willie? Yeah, boy. Let them have it. Oh. Come on, Willie. Harder. Hit him again. Harder. Oh. How you feeling, sport? You got any talkative impulses yet? I tell you, I don't know what it's all about. Do it to him some more, Willie. No fair passing out on a sport. Come on, you can take it. Yeah, but can you? Hi. Now then, you rat. Go on, get over there. Chase. Chase, no. If you pull that trigger, even my influence wouldn't save you. What's that to you? You didn't get sandbag. They did that? But why? What are they after? Gloria Barlow. When I wouldn't tell them where she was, they tried to beat it out of me. Well, she croaked our pal George Barry, didn't she? We were just going to take her over to the cops. Let me have the gun, Chase. I'll keep them covered while you phone the police. They disconnected the phone before they disconnected me. All right, I'll take them downtown. No, I'll phone the police. Now, you keep them covered before they get the jump on you. All right, stay back there. Who is it? It's David Chase. Let me use your phone, baby. Some visitors put mine out of commission. Chase? I don't know. Uh oh. Uh oh. Go on back then, lock your door. Jarbo! What oh. happened to you? Oh. Cuba got to the light switch and turned it off. His dude slugged me in the dark. Are you all right? Yeah. I'm I better sit right. down there, Chase. No, 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 Chase. I'm sure you're all right. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Did you get the police? I didn't have time. When I heard all the racket over here, I came right back. I'll phone the police now from the lobby. No, 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 later, Chase. The important thing right now is finding Gloria Barlow. If we can just pin that Barry murder where it belongs. Well, that's a job for the police, isn't it? Well, as long as they think she killed him, they won't look any further. They'll keep on hunting her. And so will Benny Cuba. So, what do you suggest doing? Well, we've got to find her. As Barry's secretary, Miss Barlow might know if anyone had a grudge against him. It could be. Oh, and here's another thought. If he watches on a girl's salary, he might watch on horse pets, too. And the mob won't take that line down. Yeah, that idea occurred to me, too. Something I ought to look into. Oh, uh, if you hear from Miss Barlow, find out everything you can if she knew anything about Barry's affairs. Yeah, especially if he's in bad with the bookie mob. Contact me if you find out anything we can use, will you, Chase? That I will. There was a chance Gloria knew some answers. But if the wrong people saw me go to her room, it might lead the police straight to her door. Maybe there was a safer way to get a line on the bookie syndicate and find out if Benny Cuba really was head man of the outfit. So I decided to contact Benny Cuba's girlfriend.
It's a big idea, phoning me about a friend of mine from back east wanting to see me. I don't see no friend of mine here. Who are you looking right at me, sugar? Just a minute, Mr. Chase. You may be from back east, but you're no friend of mine. Well, I can hope, can't I? I've been hoping ever since I saw you at the racetrack this afternoon. Oh, sugar, you're so lovely, I just had to make an excuse to see you again. You got me up here just to tell me that. Brother, if I had your crust, I'd open up a bakery. Now, that's a tart remark from such a sweet cookie. You think you didn't like me? You catch on quick. Do you know what Benny'd do if he found out about this? He'd drop you in Santa Monica Bay with cement galoshes. Mm-hmm. Well, he'd be losing one of his best customers. You'd be surprised the amount of money I dropped to him on the wrong horses. Who are you kidding? You're probably the kind of piker that cries like a baby if you lose two bucks. Well, two bucks, I mean, uh, two dollars here, two dollars there, you know. Benny don't even know the syndicate books two dollar bets. He only looks at the overall take. Oh, I see. That big, huh? Mm, up to a hundred thousand a day. What are we talking about that for? Trixie, I just wanted to be sure that Benny Cuba is a big wheel in the bookie syndicate. Hey, now, now wait a minute, Mr. Chase. You wouldn't tell him what I said, would you? I must have been out of my mind spilling information like that. <laughs> what size cement galoshes do you wear, Trixie? Here's the latest on the <laughs> oh, racetrack murder of George Barry. Barry's former secretary and principal suspect, Gloria Barlow, has just been arrested. Police, acting on a mysterious telephone tip, located her 30 minutes ago, hiding in a downtown hotel room, and have now booked her... Hey, what's now, look, the idea? I hate to be rude, but you gotta go now. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to the precinct jail. Come on, honey. That's it. Goodbye, dear. I'm not interested in anything you have to say, Mr. Chase. Not interested? When I have a theory that might help you? I'll just bet. Yeah, that's the point. Too many people did make bets, big bets, on George Barry's horse. Paradox? What's that got to do with it? Look, Gloria, out here bookmaking is against the law, but it's a big business just the same. It's operated by a syndicate of mobsters and racketeers. Everybody knows that. Yes, but... Well, up until a few months ago, Paradox was a rank outsider. In their winter book, the syndicate offered as much as 50 to 1 against his winning the gold cup. Well, suddenly, Paradox becomes hot. He wins so many races that he becomes an odds-on favorite. But I still don't see. Well, if he wins the handicap, the winner book will lose a million dollars. And no mob wants to get clipped for that kind of money, believe me. No, I suppose not. But suppose something happens to Paradox. Suppose he breaks a leg or, or stops a bullet. Then the bookies are sitting pretty. Well, they even keep all the money already bet in the winter book. Do you get it now? I'm beginning to. Yeah, we thought the Barry murder was deliberate. And the Paradox accidentally stopped a stray slug. But suppose Paradox was deliberately shot. And Barry stopped a stray slug. It's fantastic. Murdering a horse. Not so fantastic to the bookies. If they could save a fortune, believe me. You keep saying the bookies. Who are they? I'll tell you the name of the top man. Ben Cuba. Cuba? Mm-hmm. Why, he was with us at the track today. That he was. And if he framed you for the murder, the case would be closed. No one would suspect him. You know, when Barry fired you and slapped your face in public, you became the perfect fall guy. Then Cuba must have told the police where to find me. And I thought it was you. Me? Oh, so that's why I got such a frosty welcome just now, huh? Well, you got the hotel room for me. Nobody saw us together. What? I see. I've got an idea. I better get to work on it. Where are you going? To phone the track security police and Trixie Tremaine. I want to set a trap right in the stable where Barry was killed. Oh, don't go away, honey. I'll be right back. Hey, what does I-N-T-E-L-L-E-C-T -L -L -E mean? Is that the name of a horse? No, it's a word. You don't need to know what that means to wear mink. I had all the answers now, and the trap I was about to set needed live bait. That bait was David Chase. Come on, honey, will you answer it, please? 
Hello? Hello, Trixie. This is David Chase. Yes, Mr. Chase. Now, look, Trixie, you're a nice kid, and I don't want to see you get in any trouble. So get away from that bookie mob before it's too late. I, uh, don't understand. As soon as I pick up one more clue over at the Barry stables at the track, I'm going to break this murder wide open. And the whole gambling syndicate will fall down around the ears of the big shot. Now, if you don't want to get caught in the wreck, get out of town for a while. Bye-bye, cement galoshes. <clears throat> Hey, wait a minute. He hung up. That's okay. I heard enough. You heard enough, but are you going to do anything about it? Plenty, baby. Where did Willie say he was going? To the delicatessen. I'll see you later. called a Trixie had bought me tickets for win, place, and show on this two-way murder parlay. And if my hunch bet paid off, I was coming into the home stretch. The finish wire depended on Trixie relaying my tip to the right person. If my play turned out to be wrong, <laughs> then they might ship me back to New York in a wooden box. A lot depended on the track police and homicide boys meeting me here. Then the Barry murder would be solved, as well as the death of a million-dollar racehorse. Just to copper my bet, I decided to find some cover until company arrived. Turn around, Chase. I hate to plug anybody in the back. You're out of practice, Jabo. You missed me as far as you missed Paradox when you killed Barry. You asked for it, Chase. You're too smart for your own good. Yeah, smart enough to know that you're the head of the bookie syndicate. You gave yourself away when you sent the police after Gloria Barlow. You saw me come out of her room while you sat in mine pretending Cuban slugged you. Cuban worry never slugged you. You deliberately let them go, proving they're on your side. I said you were too smart for your own good. We got you trapped. I'm trapped? What do you think you are? I phoned the police. They'll be here any minute now. Cuba, we got only one chance. A long shot. Yeah, boss. Willie, huh? drop your gun. Drop it! Hey, drop it! We throw Willie to the cops for double murder. Keep your eye on Chase. Oh, you Chase. Hey. Boss, I didn't mean... You made me do it. It's your fault. Get Cuba. Well, you killed your own boss. That's your finish. It was an accident. It was Willie's doing. You'll never convince the police unless you come clean about Jarbo and the rest of the bookie syndicate. Uh, take a murder rap first. I'm no stool pigeon. How about changing his mind, Willie? Remember what he tried to do to you? Yeah, Mr. Chase. You name it, I'll do it. Here. Take this sack. That sand bucket over there. Sand bucket? Get going. Don't ask questions. Put some sand in that sack. All right, now twist it, Willie. No, you wouldn't, Chase. All right, Willie. No, Willie, Chase, don't, don't, I'll spill. Hold don't it, Willie, hold it. That's all I wanted to hear. You can tell the rest of the police. Sixty days in jail. I'm afraid so, sugar. It's called aiding and abetting. It's a serious offense. There's one way out, though. If you're willing to be paroled into my custody. Paroled? Mm-hmm. That's right. We could have lunch at the Turf Club tomorrow afternoon. I have a tip on a filly in the second race. <laughs> For another exciting mystery, read Front Page Detective magazine. And tune in next week, same time, same station, for another thrilling episode of Front Page Detective on television. You're invited to be with David Chase as he again unravels a case of mystery and intrigue on Front Page Detective.